Hi and welcome. We are going to talk today about Unit 2.1, the beginning of our derivatives. So in order to understand derivatives, we really have to start at slope and rate of change. So this, uh, this whole video should really feel like review. Okay, uh, just a reminder, what is our slope? Here's our first little example, but you know, what is slope? And I've placed it here for you in case we can't remember. It's simply change in y over change in x. That's you guys might remember that is like rise over run. And so I've written it both ways. You can either do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 or the other way around. The biggest thing to be sure of is that both your x, y coordinates are just matched. However you do it, as long as you're pairing them in the correct order. So we have this, we have this question right here. And what we're trying to do is estimate the value of our slope between P5 and P9. So that's this category right here and this category right here. So simply put, I'm going to put in my change in Y and my change in X and plug it in. It's as simple as that. So here's that work. I, here's my change in Y over change in X. I simplify down and I get negative 36. And we can interpret that as a sentence. Our literature st sentence there would be the Y value is changing at a rate of negative 36 units per unit of X. We have another example, very similar, we're going to do between P6 and P8. Again, we simply have change in Y over change in X. I simplify it down and we get a, the same answer, actually, which can also be interpreted the same way. But what do these values mean? So let's look at an example of this. Let's look at this visually. We're going to connect to a word problem and we'll continue from there. So I plug these into a graph. We created a little scatter plot of our points. Doesn't that kind of look like a graph that we recognize? Isn't that our parent function are quadratic, except it's simply flipped. So what we can do in our graphing calculator is create a regression analysis. And now we can actually see that best fit curve. It really is probably a quadratic equation. So I went ahead and modeled the quadratic equation right here, because how would we use this information? I started with data, but how would we use that? Well, here's an example of a word problem that we could associate from it. From five feet above a swimming pool, a child throws a ball upward. The height of the ball t, uh, t seconds after the child throws it is given by this equation, which is the same equation I just modeled for you guys. So using this equation, we could answer lots of questions. What was the initial height? Well, that's given to us in the word problem, five feet. What is the highest height? When is the ball ending? How many seconds is it at the highest height? How many seconds is it when it hits the, when it returns to the ground? How many seconds is it when it returns to five feet? Feet. There's hundreds of questions we could answer with this data. But why are we connecting back to this concept? And it's because if we interpret the information that we just saw, either between P5 and P9 or even P6 and P8, let's interpret it step by step. What was our X? Well, in fact, it was our time. That's pretty common, right? Time is independent, no, no man, no woman. But our Y in this instance was our height. So we can interpret that as a change in height over change in time. And we look at that, if we wanted to write our sentence, we're going to bring back in that rate of change uh, language. The average rate of change, or I'm going to uh, abbreviate as AROC, of the height of the ball from two seconds to four seconds is 36 feet per second squared. But y'all might pause and say, hold on, Miss Jag, where did my negative sign go? Well, remember, as we're talking about slope and as we begin talking about context, which is important in calculus, as we begin talking about context, we're going to notice something that sometimes and most times, actually, our negatives and our positives, those are those sign indications indicate direction, especially as we start talking about derivatives and our second derivatives. So this is telling me I am going down. That's what that negative sign tells me. Okay, same thing with between P6 and P8, it's the same information. And so I ask you this challenge question to think about before you come in next time. Do you think if I pick any pair of points between T equals two and T equals four, the average rate of change will always be 36 feet per second? I want you to think about that. Moving on, I've got, uh, I've got my final thing regarding this data. What happens if I want you to estimate the instantaneous rate of change? As of right now, we've talked about slope. As of right now, we've talked about average rate of change. But what do you think is happening at t equals 3? What is the instantaneous rate of change? And so what we're going to do is we're going to transition into understanding the difference between instantaneous rate of change and average rate of change. So here's a real quick summary. The slope between two points, y'all know, is this formula. The more appropriate formula that we're going to use in calculus is this formula right here that I'm circling with my cur cursor. We're going to move past delta y delta x and we're going to move into change in function value over change in uh, my independent variable. 
And so right now, this is the slope of the secant line. What is a secant line? It's a line that hits my curve at exactly two points. The slope of my secant line is what we call the average rate of change. This is an estimation of the uh, rate of change between all of these points. But what about the slope of a tangent line? What's that big difference? Well, again, secant hits my curve at exactly two points. Well, the slope of a tangent line hits at exactly one point. This is what we refer to as instantaneous rate of change. We can estimate the instantaneous rate of change of something using the average rate of change around it. Or what we're going to find out next class is that our instantaneous rate of change is the definition of our derivative. My dy over my delta x, delta y over my delta x is what we call dy over dx, which is the definition of y prime, which is our derivative notation. That's brand new notation for most of you. Okay, so I have some examples. In example one, we have this uh, graph that's given to us and we have an equation, experimental biologist, yada, yada, yada. So the very first thing, of course, with all word problems, who cares about all of the nonsense? Let's find the information that is important to us. Ooh, didn't want to do that. Okay, so the only thing that mattered to me, where'd my pen go? Oh, was this little line down here, right? Find the slope of the secant line of P Q and interpret its meaning, okay? So let's highlight that. Here's the slope of that secant line, that point between P and Q hitting two points. So I can see this as change in P over change in T. Where do I get those values? It's right here from my coordinate point. So change in P is 190, change in T is, two, uh, is over 22. So I can plug that in and we get approximately 8.636, yada, 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 yada. However, what are we talking about? Let's think of this in context. We're talking about fruit flies, and their population, so how how many fruit flies in a population? Are there 8.63s? No, that's not true of a population. There can't be 8.6 of a fruit fly. So we're going to do an estimate. So we say that it is approximately nine flies per day. But we don't forget our word approximately. And that's an average rate. That is not the instantaneous rate. That's that secant line example. Here's another one. A rock blade breaks loose from the cliff, top of a bleh from the top of a tall cliff, what's the average speed, yada, yada, yada. So again, I take from that and I pull the important information. There's my important information, nothing else matters. So I find my average speed. If I see the word average, I know I can use my average rate of change in formula. If I see the word instantaneous, that tells me I can only use derivatives or I have to use an estimation as my answer. So I plug in that information, d of 4 minus d of 0, because that's the very first question during the first four seconds. Where did I get 0? It tells me first. So first four seconds is from 0 to 4. I plug that in, and I get 64 units per second. My literature statement is the average speed of the rock during the first four seconds of fall is 64 units per second. Again, I mimicked the language of the question. I answered the question or put my because, and I did not forget my units. Second question, we're going from 1 to 3. So I do the exact same thing. I just change my A and B values. I still get 64 units per second, but I can rewrite my statement as such. We have a third example. Again, read through it. Pull the important information. There's the only information I need. Now we know we're looking from 2 to 8. That's my A to B. So I plug that in, F of B minus F of A all over B minus A. I keep on going, I keep on going, and I get my answer. So I can write my literature statement, the speed of the roller coaster, yada, yada, yada. I mimic the, the question. And what did I write here? Important little note. This is negative 42.25. I could have written the that, you know, is equal to, I put, could have put the average speed as negative. But the real interpretation is that it is decreasing, which is what I wrote, decreasing at a rate of 42.25, yada, yada, yada. All right, our fourth and final example, I, I modeled in here purposely because I wanted you all to kind of notice something that you can do with your TI Inspire. This is a calculator example. And so I've got this equation right here. I know that this is the important information that I pulled out. And so the first thing I'm gonna have to do is plug it into my F of B uh, formula, but how do I do that easily and readily? So we're gonna transfer over to my Inspire real quick. I plugged it into a graph. As you can see, that's the same information. Ooh, we're cutting the video, so we'll pause and we'll be right back. <laughs> 